So hello everyone, I'm Todd Libby. Um, first, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the organizers uh, for putting this together and allowing me to present uh, this talk today. Um, the speakers for their presentations uh, and um, all the attendees for attending. Uh, I want to uh, again, thank everybody and uh, happy uh, GAD day. So let's go into this. Um, the first off, uh, I am 100% an accessibility advocate. It's part of my job. It's been part of my job for 22 years now. And um, from the moment that I started my accessibility journey, it's been one that has been uh, educational and now I get to educate people uh, during my job as well. There are still many barriers for entry, accessible entry. And it, this uh, picture shows a wall and it has a sign on it, which says accessible entry. And the uh, handicap uh, or the disabled symbol uh, on, the, on the sign as well. Um, I find many things still that are inaccessible uh, during my job and doing auditing during the day, uh, get to uh, find these things in uh, for the companies that I work, uh, do uh, uh, work for. Um, I get to point these out and uh, assist them in implementing changes for the, for the better, for inclusive design as well. So 1 billion people is the figure that I have. Uh, with the advent of new technologies and the rapid advancements of platforms and frameworks and libraries, 15% of the world's audience has a disability of some form. And this number is from the link on the bottom from the uh, World Health Organization, which um, I don't know if I can share that right now, but I, I can share that uh, later as well during the uh, Q and A. Um, and of course, we all know uh, uh, cognitive disabilities uh, can be one form of disability. So in this picture, I have a, a man uh, with his uh, son or family member who appears to have a cognitive disability. I don't want to speculate on what that could be, um, but they are uh, touching foreheads and having a, a nice family moment together. There's also visual uh, disabilities. And in this next slide, uh, it shows someone who is standing in a, what appears to be an alleyway holding up a pair of eyeglasses and everything is pretty blurry in the picture. Uh, and I know of many people, including family members who have visual uh, disabilities as well. Motor skill disability. And in this slide, there is a individual in a uh, wheelchair and next to that individual is uh, an able body uh, individual standing next to them. And they appear to be in, at some sort of sporting event maybe, uh, or some event and they're uh, not close to where people, other people are, um, where there's a fence because of the barrier of, it appears there's a lawn or some sort of uh, grassy area uh, that they can't uh, access with the wheelchair. Now there are also disabilities that aren't seen. Situational and invisible. Um, situational being, uh, Take for instance, um, 
a broken arm uh, or a child sitting in your lap. Uh, those can be situational. Invisible uh, disabilities can be uh, migraine headaches. I suffer from migraine headaches myself. Um, and when I do, I can't focus well. Sometimes things get blurry. So there's a lot of contrast uh, problems, issues that I have uh, when, if I have to work uh, through a migraine headache. So here you see in this frame, uh, in this slide, a father holding his child, which brings me back to that, uh, when you have a child, that's a situational disability. Uh, I've had, <laughs> I have two children and uh, they're much older now, but when they were younger, I had uh, a situational disability as far as a, a child in my arms that was kicking around. They wanted to get down. They wanted to do whatever. They wanted to go off and play. And uh, I was trying to do work, answer emails, or so, so, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, so that's a situational one that uh, I have encountered. So there are strides underway to address more newer and hidden disabilities with the advent of the first working public draft of the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines 3.0 release. Um, so I wanted to share some tips to start uh, your accessibility journey or to bring accessibility to the workplace uh, and advocate for the people who I borrow this from a friend uh, for the people on the other side of the glass or the people that don't have a voice. And um, we as accessibility advocates can speak on behalf of those people and advocate for accessibility in the, the projects and the workflows that we do. So the first one, as you see here, uh, buy-in. Uh, it shows a man straightening his tie. Uh, his uh, picture is cut off at the chin. But uh, buy-in and support starting from the top of the organization will continuously be successful across the organization. Keeping executives engaged and meeting with them regular, regularly will ensure success with your accessibility initiative, but will also uh, provide support for when new accessibility initiatives need to be implemented or when there are disagreements among teams on the implementation or prior prioritization, you have the support of executives. Once you have buy-in from executives, and that, you know, it, it goes back to uh, coordinating efforts across departments may be difficult and time consuming at first. So that support from the top will help alleviate the pressure and the burnout that can happen when taking on the task of creating or and implementing an accessibility strategy. If the pushback is more than you can handle, you can, uh, I, which I have done uh, on occasion, uh, I've said something like, well, you can save the company a lot of money and time and headaches that will be saved in the development and the design phases to get a better product out to everyone. And you won't be losing potential revenue. So once you have that buy, as I said, uh, from those executives, having a person or ideally a team focused on accessibility throughout each department can help. They can help answer questions and you can uh, work with others and you can help others in those departments uh, practice those guidelines. Become the expert in that department regarding accessibility and or become the expert in your department when it comes to accessibility. Help set up documentation and tooling helps uh, and serve as an intermediary between departments and their accessibility, accessibility liaison if there is one. 
assess the products and the expertise within the company. So gauging the point where the product or products are as far as how inclusive and accessible they are is a key priority. That will only help the team or individual in their efforts to make the product better. Uh, what, what's the current state of accessibility as far as the product goes? What's the current state of accessibility with the website or the mobile app? Uh, getting the general idea of the level of knowledge uh, that the teams and the people in the company currently have is also important going forward. Um, how versed are they in the accessibility guidance and, and practices? Do they know anything about the uh, web content accessibility guidelines? How much training will you need to have? And I will say, I will add this, uh, the web content accessibility guidelines are difficult to read. From the standpoint of, I get a lot of questions from people on Twitter and through email about what a certain success criteria does. And I, it's, it's very technical. And uh, as far as the 3.0 uh, guidelines that are being worked on, um, Hopefully that technical jargon and that uh, technical uh, wording will become easier for, for people to understand. Establish guidelines for the company is the next uh, thing I wanted to uh, stress. Consistent product implementation greatly benefit the organization. It reduces the amount of work, which in turn can reduce the number or it reduce the amount of stress teams can be under. Design systems should not be used to only you know, ensure branding and consistency, but accessibility also. Uh, accessible design systems make a world of difference. Accessible components can help for obvious reasons and reduces the time it will take to start over from scratch and try to invent something that has already been done. Testing procedures should be implemented to help departments such as QA and help developers do their jobs well and efficiently. This is the important one I think as well is getting uh, colleagues to buy in and care, uh, more buy in from uh, the people that you would work with and see every day during the day. In this landscape, again, of frameworks and libraries, uh, going fast and breaking things and overlooking and undervaluing accessibility, some people need to be educated. And those that do not have voices, like I said, the people on the other side of the glass need you to be their voice. Pitching to those not already in the know that accessibility means less time, less headaches, less stress and can sway a developer I have found faster than anything else. It's also important that we share. So in my case, it would be the American Disabilities Act in the United States, uh, in Canada, the Accessible Canada Act, or uh, in the EU, it's the EN301549. But share the importance of your country's accessibility standards if there are uh, standards. Um, the US government, for instance, uses Section 508, and that may differ, that obviously does differ uh, from country to country. Sharing the importance of these guidelines that your country hopefully has can be crucial to getting the company and departments on board. So in this slide, it shows uh, the different laws for different companies. So you have the USA has the American Disabilities Act, also known as the ADA, Canada, the Accessible Canada Act, the ACT, and in the EU, it's EN301549. Uh, when WCAG 2 is released, it will be considered for inclusion in the EU standards. England has the Equality Act of 2010 combined with several equal 
Access Acts and regulations, including the Disability Discrimination Act of 1995, called the DDA, the BSI 8878 standard. And to find out more, there is a link right there. I will have a link to the slides that I keep online uh, so that um, you can have these links handy as well. Lived experiences. Take examples from the outside world every day as use cases. Test and tape or video cases where a disabled user is trying to use an inaccessible website or application, a form, for instance, or a piece of assistive technology they use in everyday life. It's easy to find such cases if you know someone in your family or your circle of friends. Maybe you'll need to go to a source that tests with disabled folks outside of the company. Uh, for, there's a company, for instance, that I know of, or there's actually a few uh, that uh, do accessibility testing with disabled folks. Uh, one is called Applause. Um, and showing these cases to colleagues can turn some people around to embracing accessibility at the workplace and in the workflow. And in this picture, uh, I have a sign with the uh, men's and women's restroom, handicap accessible uh, restroom, disabled, uh, excuse me, uh, restroom, uh, changing station for uh, children, and an arrow pointing to um, a train platform. We've evolved since I can remember where there were no signs uh, for these things other than the men's and women's restroom. Uh, accessibility does not end after handoff. So websites and applications are an ever evolving medium that we work with, even designs and testing. Uh, so we need to be cognizant of those changes and make it paramount that accessibility be practiced well after handoff to the, for the client to the client or upon completion of the project or in everyday workplace situations as well. Uh, which brings me to the next point of employing uh, disabled folks. Uh, these are the people with the lived experiences. They can benefit your company and team by having them aboard. Uh, you can use folks to test with that have those lived experiences, and you can also hire folks that have those lived experiences. If you don't run a company, then you need to look back and get executives on board, as I was making the uh, first point with getting executives on board, with bringing on one or two folks to help test uh, at the company. Uh, and they can help with the accessibility uh, of the website. They benefit you as much as you been, uh, are helping them and benefiting them. Understanding the guidelines. Yes, it can be very daunting to look at the WCAG, w, uh, the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, and read it. It's very uh, daunting to look at. Uh, so it, it's writing that will make even the most seasoned accessibility head uh, explode. Accessibility experts head explode, excuse me. Even mine, I've read it uh, recently and I, I, there are places still in the WCAG guidelines that even confuse me. Uh, those who have been working in the W3C have heard the people that want to be able to read WCAG guidelines and understand those guidelines. So, as I said before, 3.0 makes a conscious effort to make that possible with more clearer language. Uh, for now, I do suggest to people that they read through and make an effort to understand something in the meantime that they need that will benefit them going forward. Uh, 
ask all the questions. Uh, I tell this to people all the time, whether it's on Twitter or your Slack groups or Discord servers, email, whatever form of communication you're using. Um, ask questions, ask them all. No question uh, that you have shouldn't be asked. Um, I can be found in online, I'm on Twitter a lot and uh, through email or whatnot, I'm on the Ally Slack uh, channel as well. And um, you can find me and ask me the questions. And if I don't know, I can find somebody who does know or a source for you that will answer those questions. Um, and the accessibility community is very gracious and happy to help. Uh, it's made of all, up of a lot of uh, people. It's made up of a diverse group of folks that are more than happy to share their experiences and their knowledge with you. Uh, it's not a closed group of people. And um, we love to answer all the questions. We do have a few questions for you. So the first being, uh, what was your motivation behind advocating web accessibility? How did you get started with it? Well, I have family members, like I mentioned, that um, have uh, accessibility needs that have uh, disabilities, um, motor skill uh, disabilities and um, visual disabilities as well. So when I uh, would see these people, friends even, and family members uh, struggling with something, that got me to want to learn more about accessibility because I heard about accessibility um, through my contacts at the time online. And uh, that was basically how everything started. Yeah, I mean, that's great. When you see people around you, you and you tend to understand them. That's a great insight. I hope it motivates a lot others to go in the same direction. Uh, the next one, uh, like, uh, how would you encourage people, especially teams or organizations, to start considering web accessibility as an important aspect for product, and especially for websites? <clears throat> so the key uh, for me has been when I do, um, when I talk to companies or businesses, um, the key is getting the stakeholders and the executives on board, the person or people at the top. Um, like I mentioned in the talk, when you get those people at the top on board, that makes your job of advocating easier and they will have hopefully they will have your back and you will have their 100 percent support um i don't know if that answered the question or not but that's the major step yeah i think it's great i think for every initiative it's the first step that counts you need to take that first step forward and things to things will fall into place one last question for you uh, and then we'll wrap up your session uh, as an advocate do you see designers having some additional knowledge around accessibility because nowadays designers are more obsessed with the design looking aesthetically pleasing but they don't consider web accessibility as something that they should lay stress on so on the designer front what's your take I see a small uh, increase in designers um, wanting to get wanting to learn about accessibility more. Uh, there's a long way to go. The same uh, I, I see the same with developers as well. Um, out of the two groups, I think designers, are a little more uh, they they don't know or they don't they haven't learned about accessibility like developers do because um, when i talk to a developer and 
say, well, this uh, doesn't meet uh, WCAG AA standards. Uh, they usually, if accessibility um, is something that they're focusing on, that usually gets fixed fast. Um, as far as designers go, I've had more uh, conversations about uh, color contrast with designers and who weren't aware that they were color contrast guidelines. So um, steadily more and more as I talk to more and more designers in the communities that I belong to, I get the word out and that's where a part of my advocating comes in. Yeah, I think that answers the question. Thank you so much for such a wonderful session. I hope this really motivates a lot of people to start taking up accessibility uh, very seriously while their development process, their designing process, and their overall product development process. So thank you so much. It was wonderful having you here.